Hello everyone, happy new year. It's finally 2022 and I could not wait for 2021 to finish as I think a lot of people did. So welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. I could not be more happy to have you here. Before we start this video, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you guys, the new subscribers and the old one that has stayed subscribed all of this time. This past year, or I would say more like six to seven months it has been quite a bit of an increase in subscribers so i've been doing youtube since early 2018 and i've actually more than doubled the amount of subscribers in the past six to seven months that it has been through all my youtube career so i would like to say huge thank you to you guys that have visited this channel and decided to stay and also to my previous subscribers that have been with me for all of these years i am very grateful to you guys and it feels very nice to actually see your work kind of pay off. If you didn't know, I finished my studies this summer and since then I have been able to put a little bit more time into this and I could see the results of it and I'm very happy about that. I have been uploading quite a bit right until the end of Halloween and uh, Halloween has always been a stressful time because I try to upload as much content as possible and then I always tend to get burned out. So basically in November and December, there's always almost no content. And it was definitely the case this year too. I didn't upload anything on Instagram and I've only uploaded like one or two videos max on my YouTube channel. I'm not gonna lie, I did need that break, not just from YouTube, from a lot of things. I might get into that a little bit later. This is the first video that I'm filming this year. I did film two videos that I have not uploaded yet. I had every intention in uploading them, but I just couldn't get myself to sit and finish editing them, so they never made it yet. I just wanted to start the new year with this video instead of just uploading my last video. So after this video, I will upload the two other videos that have been pre-filmed and then after those two, it will be back to normal schedule. You might notice that my hair has become a little bit darker. In my next videos, my hair is very light blonde, so I don't want you to think that after the pink hair faded, I went to dark and then to light blonde again my hair could not handle that. It is very fragile at this moment, so yeah, those videos are pre-filmed. And at this moment I have this very cool tone, which I love, dark blonde hair, I guess. I just got over the very light blonde hair very fast, although it is a lot of work to get my hair to get that light. I just got over it and I just wanted to make it a little bit darker. Anyways, let's 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 keep going. One of my goals this year is to make shorter videos, although I know this will probably be a long video as well. And uh, honestly, it kills me to edit them. It takes just too long to edit. And that's why I procrastinate sitting down and finish editing them. Uh, what else did I want to say before I start? Mm, not much. Yeah, let's just talk about what this video is. This is a yearly favorites video. I don't think I did one last year. I did one for 2018 and 2019. Anyways, I really wanted to do this year because to kind of sum up the year, to kind of put an end to it and never look back. <laughs> uh, yeah, although I do have two videos from last year that will be up this year. We are filming in loungewear because this is going to be the theme of the year chill this is by the way a sweater that i got from my brother for christmas and i really like it so thank you bro anyways yeah as i was saying we're doing yearly favorites but this year i actually don't have much makeup to talk about both because i haven't really been buying a lot of makeup this year at all but also i don't feel like there have been a lot of exciting launches either that or i haven't been really aware of the launches that have been there so yeah that's why i don't have that many makeup products to talk about i don't have everything in every category i don't really do it that way i try to only talk about the products that i discovered this year that really made a difference in my makeup routine that's why i decided for the first time this year to add some other stuff like for example some homeware and some perfumes and uh, books and yeah i thought i would just make it a little bit more interesting and at the end of the video i just want you to briefly talk about my new year's resolutions stay tuned to that i am sitting in my puff i did film one of the videos that haven't made the day of the light yet in this corner of my living room and i quite liked it so i thought 
might as well start filming here a little bit all right let's start then okay so i'm gonna start with a product that made the biggest impact <laughs> on me this year and that is i don't know if you can guess it that is this guy right here this is the fenty beauty eavesdrops blurring skin tint i first got it around spring of 2021 i have been basically using it ever since i thought that this would be a great product for the summer and then i would kind of move on to other things after the summer but i was wrong i've been using it all year after i discovered it and i still use it i just got myself a new shade i was in the shade 5 for the most of the year but now i also got the shade 2 although i did want to get the shade 3 but it was sold out anyway so yeah this product has been game changing basically i did not really love it in the beginning when i tried it because i tried it with my fingers that a lot of people love using it with and with a sponge which soaked up a lot of product but i found that the best way for me to use it is with a brush and it's amazing it has quite a bit of coverage it's not that low coverage it will even up your skin tone very beautifully and it is blurring that makes this product look so great on the skin and honestly just such a great product to use on an everyday basis and i even worn this for like events and stuff like that or when i was going out for like nicer occasions this is i guess one of the, my most used products or definitely base products this year i think this was on a lot of people's favorite list for last year okay next thing this is one product that not gonna lie i got it at the beginning of november so i've only had it for a couple of months but it has made a huge difference in my life so i needed to talk about it this is the auric glow last in the shade pirate for those of you that don't know this is samantha revendell's brand and before october i think she didn't really ship to Norway they did ship in a lot of countries worldwide but not to Norway and finally god bless them and they started shipping to Norway and to a few other new countries I've been dying dying to get my hands on this product because this is right up my alley I love glowy base products and this is exactly what it is a glowy base product I really love this olive shade the packaging is so pretty like look at this this frosted bottle with it just feels luxurious and has this beautiful strong cup i love my charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter might love this one more than that you probably know that that has been one of my favorite products for many years i couldn't let it down for a very very long time i would use it all the time i feel like this charlotte tilbury thing i guess it's a little bit more creamy it applies a little bit easier although this applies quite easy too this is a little bit of a different consistency but i love how it stays on the face it kind of sets you know those products that are a glowy base that kind of dry down and they just leave the shimmer this is not like that but that's how I thought it was gonna be because the Charlotte Silbury one stays creamy and I want my base products to stay creamy. I want to fill them. I want to give me a little bit of light to put my foundation on top. And this kind of does that, but not as much as the Charlotte Tilbury one. It just looks so beautiful on the skin. I think this will look so pretty for the summer because it doesn't really give you coverage, but it gives you something to the skin. It kind of, in a way, evens up the skin tone, although it's not really a skin tint, but it does have some tint to it. I cannot wait to use it during the summer. I also try to use it on top of my foundation as a highlighter. It works awesome for that too overall it has been an amazing discovery for me this year and it has definitely become one of the staples in my collection that's for sure i would really love to try more of their products like the um, eye duo toppers or sh cream shadows one thing at a time right now i'm so happy that i was able to manage to get my hands on it i was thinking like what if i travel to another country that they ship to and i ordered it and i get it <laughs> i was getting a bit desperate but yeah i don't have to anymore so awesome product okay so next product that i have to talk about is this cream blush that i have right here this is a korean brand which is called juicy punk i think no the brand is called oh um, i'm just gonna write it 
I think that's easier for everybody. The jelly blush in the shade CR01. It's this very pretty shade right here. I'm not gonna lie, I bought it because of the packaging because it just looks so beautiful. And also the images of the models that they had, they looked beautiful. It's not as creamy as some of the other blushes that I have, but I do use it as I use my cream brushes with a blush brush it has the texture of where you can kind of press and it leaves a mark but honestly this applies so beautiful on the skin and i love the color of it i love how it looks on the skin i love everything about it the consistency the packaging is so beautiful and i do have a lot of blushes that i love this year like my new stick blushes will always be some of my favorite but this is a newest discovery so that's why i thought i would talk about it in this video after trying a few korean makeup this year i'm not gonna lie i want to try a lot more because they look very innovating and very beautiful speaking of korean makeup i've also fallen in love with the lip products from this brand this is the brand Peripera. Peripera. i've really loved these lipsticks right here these are called the ink airy sticks the packaging is so beautiful look at this they look so pretty they have this velvety look to them and finish but what i like about this first of all the colors they have a very beautiful color selection but they also are super super lightweight on this lips i mean they are matte they're definitely not a creamy lipstick but they are super lightweight on the skin my lips definitely do not feel like they are moisturized but they don't feel dry either if that makes sense they are super super light and it's basically a different experience from most of my other lipsticks that i have look at this they're so pretty i've been really loving these lipsticks i haven't used them that much because i have so many other lipsticks that i tried to rotate through but these have definitely been a great discovery this year another formula that i really like from this brand is the ink velvet they are basically liquid lipsticks i would say they have cute little packaging right here and they look like this when you open them. I've had this in three different formulas. I've had the Ink Velvet and the Ink Airy Velvet and I also have the Serum, but the Serum was not super long lasting. These were a lot more long lasting and they just feel so amazing on the lips. Not gonna lie, they feel nicer than this. These feel a lot more natural. Those feel a little bit more matte. I've really, really enjoyed the formula of this and also the colors. Although a lot of the colors when I bought them were sold out, but I would love to try a lot more from this brand. So this has become my favorite cream highlighter, cream bronzer. This is a Fenty Cream Bronzer Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer in the shade number three macchiato technically i bought this at the end of 2020 but look at this i've used it so much i've hit pan on it it has knocked out all of my other cream bronzers that i have and i do love cream bronzers this just blends so nicely and the shade i love the shade of this bronzer and although i'm kind of cheating because i've discovered it the year before this was definitely the bronzer of 2021 for me a highlighter that i also discovered at the end of 2020 but i basically used a lot during 2021 was this this is the sephora face shimmering powder in the shade delicate glow i first bought it because it has a very beautiful pattern on it i don't know if you can see it and i was like another highlighter like i don't need more new highlighters but i got it anyway and also it's from the sephora collection brand it wasn't really expensive so that's why i got it and i wasn't able to put it down i just continued using it all the time i couldn't stop using it so the highlighter of 2021 for sure those were all of the makeup products that i had i forgot to mention i actually have another makeup product to talk about and that is brushes i've really discovered some amazing brushes this year and a lot of them have been from this set right here although now i have a lot of different brushes in this box but this is the spectrum and kitty jane hughes collaboration i did a video about this when i first tried out the set and i pronounced her last name wrong so her last name is hughes not Hajj. I don't know where did I find the D in the word, but that's how I said it for the entire video. That was embarrassing to find out how her last name was actually pronounced. Anyways, I have found a lot of new staples in my collection. Uh, you might remember I talked about specifically these two face brushes that I honestly expected 
to not like them so much but I've really become obsessed with this because they are dual fiber brushes and although I thought that they might be a little bit tricky they ended up blending out the base makeup really nicely and I also found a lot of eye brushes that I really like like this is a bit dirty so sorry about that this is another one of them it has this um, kind of a tapered triangle shape right here it, this has been really awesome to apply shimmery shades and glitters and stuff like that all over the eyelid that's an example of that and i actually have quite a few other eye brushes that i don't have right here but i've been really really liking from this set these brushes have definitely become a new staple in my collection obviously there have been a lot of products that i enjoyed using this year but i either didn't discover them this year or they weren't as mind-blowing to me as these products products not that many exciting launches this past year okay moving on to other stuff that i wanted to talk about so first thing i guess i would say has been this hand cream this is the sol de janeiro or janeiro whatever it's called bom dia bright cream it smells so good this reminds me of summer i used it so much during the summer i'm pretty sure that this scent came out this year or at least i definitely discovered it this year but since i've started smelling this i just i had to buy it then and there and i also bought the body mist body and hair mist i've talked about it in one of my favorite videos too i'm not crazy about the formula of this i mean even the original bum bum cream i wasn't like super crazy about the formula i only bought it because it smells nice but yeah this has been definitely something different and uh, i've been really really enjoying using this hand cream all year i once again love the way it smells okay speaking of perfumes i did a perfume collection video this year and if you have seen that you know how many new perfumes i bought this year and since that video i've bought two more new perfumes and i also got two perfumes as a gift this Christmas so I need help I need to stop buying perfumes but 2021 was definitely the year of perfumes for me I've bought a lot of perfumes this year and I've discovered a lot of new favorites but the perfume that I've used the most this last year and again I have a lot of perfumes that I like to rotate through perfumes i don't like wearing one specific perfume all the time has been this guy right here this is the jo malone no this i got the wrong one <laughs> the right perfume is the jo malone english pear and fresher i have it right there but <sighs> I don't want to get up and get it i've used it so much when i first smelled it on the store i sprayed it on myself uh, this smells good i went around all day and i was like i kept smelling my arm because it smelled so amazing i had to buy it the next day what i love about this brand is that they make very simple perfumes and my second favorite of this year although again i did discover a lot of new favorite perfumes this year is also from jo malone it's the blackberry and bay cologne and um <laughs> i'm so obsessed with this cologne perfume whatever when i first got it this smelled a lot all of these perfumes are unisex but for me this smelled a lot like a men's cologne and i was like I don't think I'm gonna be able to wear it because it was a blind purchase of course like most of the perfumes that I bought this year but then I started using it and I was just obsessed with it and I'm still obsessed with this cologne and recently I got a new perfume like a few days ago this is the orange blossom I had a quick dinner break and now I'm back as I was saying I recently started mixing the blackberry and bay with this one this is the orange blossom it really smells like orange blossom it smells so good and this combo right here has been really great the english pear and fresh and the blackberry and bay have definitely been the two perfumes that i've been the most obsessed with this year from all of the other ones they're both so fresh and so nice in their own unique way they are definitely quite different from all the other perfumes that i have it has been a really nice change from what i've been usually going for okay let's move on to home stuff now i have two things from rituals i've actually wasn't the biggest fan of rituals because in my opinion it was mostly marketing and packaging where i found a lot of the products were 
okay. I mean, they smell good, a lot of them, but they were okay. They weren't anything mind blowing. So I find like a lot of people love them because of their packaging. And I agree, they have beautiful packaging, but this past few months, I've actually discovered a few products that I really like and I didn't expect that. So one of them is this candle right here. It smells so good. You really have to smell it. I mean, it was pricey, but I think you get like 50 hours of burning. So this is the ritual of Ayurveda, Ayurveda, whatever it's called, collection. So basically it's the red collection and this candle smells amazing. I haven't lit it yet, but every time I walk by it, it smells so good and it makes me happy. It makes me more zen, I guess. So yeah, this was a great discovery this year. I kind of don't want to burn it. I want to keep it like this forever. And it's also so pretty. It looks fancy and the other thing that i've discovered this year from ritual that i truly love is this home scent right here this is from the private collection the wild fig this is interior perfume i guess i had another rituals home scent before perfume home perfume whatever but i didn't really like it and i or i liked it but i feel like it gets too heavy afterwards and i got over it too fast and i got rid of it afterwards because it was just too heavy too chemically and yeah yeah, not so good but this one this smells very fresh and actually very nice when i spray this i don't feel like it gets too much i don't feel like you need a lot of it you only need like one or two depending on how big is your house it doesn't get overwhelming it doesn't get sickening those two have been a great discovery from rich this year they do have some nice things but again i feel like a lot of the products they're okay this might be an unpopular opinion but what else do I have to talk about? Mm. Another thing that I've fallen in love this year. I actually just got this in the beginning of December, but I've had similar to this before. So this is my 32 ounces Hydro Flask. I had Hydro Flask for at least two years, I would say, and they're just the best. I love them so much. They keep the water so cold for many hours and I don't really put hot stuff in there, but I love to drink cold water all the time and that really keeps it for many hours. And now it comes in so many different colors but i had the smaller one i think it was the 16 ounces before but now i got this one this big one and i just love it i use it all the time i always have a hydro flask bottle with me all the time everywhere when i travel everywhere if you haven't tried one of those i highly recommend you do they're really awesome now another thing or i should say brand that i tried this year for the first time is Polo Taco, which is a nail polish brand and <laughs> I've bought quite a few of them. These are some of their nail polishes. This is Simply Neologica's brand here from YouTube. She makes really, really cool glittery holographic shades like Holo is her thing. I'm gonna show you some of them. Here are some of the most recent that I got from the winter collection. Look how pretty those look. Here are some of the other ones, the previous ones that I have. They are just great quality and I really love how square the bottle is, the edges of the bottle. I really like the design of the bottle. And she has this formula. I have two of this, I think, three of this. This formula right here, I don't remember what these are called, but these are basically very, very flat glitters or I don't think these are glitter. I think that these are like flakes. And when you apply them, they are so sparkly, but they don't have that grindiness of the glitter. So they apply so flat on the nails. So this is what I really love about this formula. I like the other glitters too, but those you can kind of feel the glitter grains, I would say, but with these ones, you can not feel them and they look super sparkling. They are so beautiful. I didn't really buy that many nail polishes since KL Polish closed. That was my one brand that I bought from all the time. But since I tried this brand, I've been really, really liking the quality of the nail polishes and the bottle. The only thing that I don't really like is that she has a very thin brush. I really like a white brush, but she does have the choice if you want to buy extra wider brushes. But in my opinion, the gel polish brushes were a lot better than the white brushes that they sell on the Holotaco website. And when I finish some of my gel polish polishes, then I guess I could replace them because they do fit perfectly. So, but for now it is what it is. So the next thing I want to talk about is quite a big thing. It's this thing right here. You probably know what this is. This is the Dyson Airwrap. It looks like this. This is basically 
the main body and it has all of these attachments now i didn't buy this with my own money i was very 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 kindly gifted this by my boyfriend not by the brand unfortunately so this is pricey as you probably already know i was actually considering to buy this myself for many months i went back and forth for a long time because it is pricey but i just kept going back to it i was like yeah but i really really want to try it and i think it will make a difference in my hair routine and boy it has done a difference the amount of time that my hair takes to go from towel wet to styled it's too much to put it that way i have very textured frizzy wavy hair i can never shower before i go somewhere so i always had to wash my hair the day before and let it air dry completely and then start styling it and even that would take at least one hour but with this one it has shortened the amount of time that i spent to style my hair by a lot this or this these are very similar i don't really notice any difference on them these are the attachments that i use the most i'm not gonna lie I don't use a lot of the other attachments so basically when i wash my hair and then i let it dry for a little bit so that they're not soaking wet i go in with this and it takes i kid you not not more than five minutes and it goes through my whole hair and it calms them down they are still a little bit frizzy after this but they are so much more calmer i usually after they are air dry completely i go in with my straightener and with my brush to try to calm them down a little bit and straighten them or curl them afterwards it would take at least an hour to do that but with this it takes me like five minutes then after that i can within like five to ten minutes very slightly style my hair with my straightener i still like to go over them with my straightener at the end because it removes the frizziness completely and in my opinion the styling lasts longer so i still do that but it takes so much less time than it used to before for me it is worth it although i didn't pay for it myself i wish that they sold them separately so that for example you could buy the main body on its own and then you could choose whatever attachment you want separately i think a lot more people would be able to afford this that way or it would be a lot more justifiable if you bought it that way because i don't use all of these attachments recently started using this one a little bit more but for me i don't personally love the way air blown hair really look like on me personally i air blown blue blue dried hair you know what i mean there like blown hair you know i know that a lot of people love that look and it looks really great on a lot of people but that's basically what i get with these attachments but i recently started using this one sometimes and still i get a little bit more volume which i like sometimes but yeah i love it so much that i even travel with it every time now almost every single time i wash my hair i will use this it has absolutely become part of my routine i did actually not discover it last year but at the end of 20 i just wanted to talk about it because i haven't really talked about it in my channel before i thought why not include it because i've definitely used it for the whole year of 2021 anyways this lives right here over my alex drawer so the last thing that i want to talk about in my favorites is a book i usually do this on my instagram stories or i actually did it last year for the first time i kind of make a list of the books that i really loved the previous year but i thought this year i'll talk about this in my youtube channel instead since we're talking about the my favorites of the year in general i don't have it right here but my favorite book of this year has been this is your brain on birth control by sarah e hill phd the surprising science of women hormones and the law of unintended consequences i recommend everybody reading this book because i've learned so much from this book about myself how my body works things about birth control in general that i think that we should learn them from doctors and other people in general i wish i had this book many years ago when i started going on the bill myself because i feel like people just or doctors they just give it to you and they don't even tell you what are the consequences or the negative side effects that you could possibly have and people take it for different reasons for like acne and uh, control their cycles and different stuff like that and a lot of times they just start too early and they just go on it for many years as i did i went on it for many years and you basically don't really 
know how it affects our body and the, the scientists still don't know yet exactly how it does but boy I learned so much from this book that I didn't even thought that would have anything to do with it so yeah this is a book that I really highly highly recommend everybody basically to read and to have a little bit of better understanding of what we're putting in our body and how our body works this is definitely a case of knowledge is powers and I'm not saying that you should or you shouldn't take the pill of course it's your decision but at least make better informed decision and I'm not saying that I wouldn't have gone on it myself but I could have definitely gone on it less I guess or I would have made a much better or much more informed decision I hope that a lot more people start to research a little bit more about it and learn more about the possible side effects that this could have because this is our everyday life and especially if you go on it for many many years this becomes yourself right it has been a very very awesome book and it has definitely opened the road for me at least to read a lot more about this subject that i would definitely keep doing too so yes anyways that was all my favorites from this year from last year not this year all right so new year's resolutions my new year resolution this year is to have no resolutions let's let's just get a little bit deep for a moment not too deep just a little bit so I, as i mentioned previously i did graduate this year and or i should say last year now because it's 2022 i did graduate last year and i made a life update graduation video there i talked a little bit about how hard it has been for my mental health all of these years that i have have been studying but especially the first six months of 2021 and basically the whole year but the first few months has definitely been the hardest one and it has been um, not gonna lie one of the lowest lows that I have had so I've basically talked about that a little bit and I have been going to therapy which I'm very lucky about that I've talked about it before unfortunately not everybody has that privilege and I wish everybody had the, one of the things that I realized through all of that therapy that I did and thinking of my own is that all of these years of studying I have always been stressed about things I always had the deadline I always had something to submit I always had mandatory lab to be there I always had something to stress about otherwise if I didn't do it something bad would happen or I would either fail the subject or the lab and I wouldn't be able to the exams or you know it has always been stressful I was something to worry about and I've lived with that kind of stress for basically six years give or take it basically had become the normal for me it kind of had become a survival mechanism and my body got used to that stress all the time so even though I finished my studies and I didn't have anything mandatory to submit or to stress about it kind of stayed with me and I was always like I need to do something in the back of my mind it would be like otherwise something bad would happen so and also another thing that has been that all of these years I've always been trying to kind of better myself in one way or another like mm, I don't know I need to do yoga I need to train I need to meditate I need to read books I need to uh, you know all of this kind of self bettering that a lot of people struggle with and want to do and I'm not saying it's a bad thing but for me it has always been like I need to do something I need to become a better person and for the most of it I felt that things fail I try to start to form a habit and then it never happens and makes me feel more like a failure basically and um, I know that it's the case for a lot of people they want to start all of this healthy new habits and they basically never stick to that's also one of the reasons why I am not doing resolutions this year that combined with all of my stress that I've had all of these years to do something otherwise something bad will happen made me realize that I need to stop I need to kind of take a break from absolutely everything that's kind of what I started doing after Halloween <laughs> in November and December I've been always running running and never stop it has been very hard for me to just stop and do nothing because in my mind it's like this is wrong something bad will happen if I don't do something it felt very wrong for my body so it, it has been taking a lot of time to kind of get used to that idea but I felt like it was very necessary to do that just to kind of restart and just to basically reboot myself kind of sounds a little bit extreme but it felt necessary because I just needed a new start a new guideline because my guideline was like stress 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 do something do something do something always so I just needed to think things a little bit slower and to kind of let myself listen 
to myself and realize what I want to do because I not gonna lie, I haven't figured it out yet what I want to do for my life and I want to take that time and basically move slowly and sit and listen to myself and not stress about everything all the time. So it has been hard, it has definitely been hard and it takes time. I'm definitely not there yet. I have become a lot better than I used to. Only realizing that I need to do this has been a big revelation. I think you know what I mean so this year I'm not doing any resolutions I'm not expecting anything big on myself my big thing for this year is to give myself the room to fail because before I was a lot like all or nothing and obviously it failed because that's not the right way to go about it at least not for me like for example with filming and YouTube I want to produce as much content as possible for you guys and because I really like it myself too but I'm not gonna be like I have to absolutely upload this one video every week because otherwise I'm gonna disappoint people and probably will I'm just gonna take it easy one step of the time and if I can manage it it will happen and if I can't then I can't and uh, I think it's gonna be better for everybody too to have a better mood when I do these things instead of like oh I have to get this video so I'm just gonna just basically put whatever up just to produce content so yeah anyways no resolutions this year obviously i want to manage things and to feel accomplished i have been wanting this for years but i think that taking it a step of the time and being kind to myself is gonna help me a lot more than i need to start a new habit i need to start a new routine and i need to start all of these new things that probably will not stick because i've been trying this for years and not much has stuck it is very tempting hearing so many people make their resolutions and their goals for the years and that's totally fine and it's nice to have goals and everything but for me right now this has to be the year of slowly reinventing myself and throwing out a lot of mentalities that I had before especially judgments from other people and society or at least what I think other people think about me and what is expected from me that definitely has been hard but I need to let those things go so that I can reinvent myself and see what I really want to do with my life and with my time one thing's for sure that I'm not quitting YouTube or social media because that's definitely something that I really enjoy doing and I really hope that I will manage to do a lot more of it and seeing my YouTube channel grow has really been motivating for me to continue and that's why I thank you so much for all the support that you have given me anyway that is my resolution I want to hear what do you think about that or what are your resolutions or what you want to achieve this year I know that it 2021 and 2020 obviously has been very hard for a lot of people but for me especially 2021 has been a lot harder than 2020 and I think it has been the same for a lot of people anyways let me know what you think please let me know what you want to watch what kind of ideas do you have something different you want to see something you want to see more of I would really love to hear that from you and give me some inspiration I'd appreciate that uh, thank you so much for watching I hope Everybody has a great year this year and um, we'll take it one step at a time. Goodbye.